Great to have you along for the ride. Thanks a lot for stopping by. Glad to have this young lady on. And her name is Alina Haba. You know her. She is a, a lawyer for President Trump. Alina, how are you? Good to see you again. I'm great. Thanks for having me again, Joe. Uh, you're very welcome. You know, I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out exactly what went down in New York because I simply don't get it. And what's interesting is those who just don't like you and just don't like Trump and don't like a guy like me who likes both of you, um, they want to come up with anything they possibly can to make sure that this was a righteous decision that you and I both know wasn't. So uh, let's just very slowly go through what we did the last time we spoke because people don't seem to understand. And I'm just going to ask you very simple questions, then we'll elaborate on it if you don't mind. Okay. Number one, was there already a judgment in this case before you ever started giving testimony at all? Yes. So in other words, he, yes. he, was, he was guilty. That's it. So you walked in we and this judge that, decided yes, guilty, he's guilty, guilty, he did it. Guilty. And it was a damages trial. There was one count that we were guilty on before we had a trial, yes. Now, is that abnormal? Is that something New York State normally does? Um, nothing about this was very normal. We were yeah. in a statute that was used for consumer fraud protection to protect individuals that don't have a voice. That was number one. So we weren't even in a normal statute. And then if you are using a consumer statute, you should be in the commercial division in New York, which we were not. Uh, this judge wanted to keep it. He had, um, clearly had this relationship with the attorney general's office and, um, you know, he, he was happy to keep it and wanted to make sure we didn't have a jury. He decided that, um, and we lost one count on summary judgment before trial. So the trial was effectively to go through the other counts and then to figure out damages, much like the Carroll case, the same thing. So, so, so he walked in, you, Donald Trump, and you walked in, the judge said, guilty, you did it. Yeah. Let's see how much money I'm going to make you give us. That's it. That's what the whole thing was about. Yeah, guilty. We'll see if you're guilty of the same thing six different times, and then we'll figure out damages. That's it. It is Alina Haba. Go and follow her everywhere, Alina Haba or HabaLaw.com. We follow each other on Twitter. I'm not sure what I have to do to get you to follow me on Instagram, but whatever, Alina, whatever. <laughs> no, actually, you do. So you you follow me on Instagram, not on Twitter. That's that's what it is. It's the other way around. Well, but, it, it, you, you know why? I if I want to feel really badly about myself, I go on Twitter. Um, I, I truly don't look, I've right. heard things about it. It, I, I, Twitter is just such a negative space for me. It's so a cesspool. It is. It is. So I, I try not to, but I will go shield my eyes and find you and hit follow. <laughs> <on them. laughs> well, you, you actually retweeted me. So, so you know where I am, but either way, um, uh, it, so guilty, how much money will you have to give us? You mentioned yeah. something about a jury trial. Everybody but everybody who is a legal brain on Twitter has told me you forgot to check the box. Now, you and I have talked yeah. about this before. Were you allowed to have a jury or not? So, first of all, let's. I'm so, I haven't talked about this box thing in so long. I'm so happy to talk about it again. <laughs> but the, it's funny. It's like one of those funny things to me now. Um, so, the box. So, if you are, the attorney general's side has a sheet. Um, it's actually their sheet that was posted on the internet. It's not ours. And they didn't post that they wanted a jury. I had a right to ask for a jury, which I did in a hearing. I said that I would like a jury. Right. Um, the judge made clear and said that he was not going to give a jury to us. He also, for my sake, reiterated that to the press in the trial and did say, I hear all the news in the beginning about the jury. They forgot to check a box. No one forgot to check a box. I invite the press and everybody on Twitter to get out of your mom's basement and actually read a little bit. Uh, <laughs> there was no box that was forgotten to be che checked. There was a conversation with the judge. And then the judge reiterated it in the beginning of trial to, for to, for clarity's sake and said, you know, I'm reading the press. She didn't forget to check a box. I decided there was no jury. It's my decision to make. This is an equitable trial, meaning money damages only, and I don't have to give him a jury. Um, the judge could have given us a jury. I asked for it, but it was not provided to us. So no box. You did not forget to ask for a jury. You wanted a jury. Judge said, no, I will be the only arbiter in this case. Yet most of Twitter who doesn't like you or Trump or me, they still think that you forgot to check some box. Did you get fired, Alina? No, I'm still here. I, I, I was told you were I fired. I, I was like, I got fired again? I called the president. I was like, sir, does this mean I get to go on vacation? <laughs> no. I'm so you did not get here. fired. I'm still a spokeswoman, lawyer. I'm still I mean, on the cases. I have many obviously. cases with the president. And um, look, 
losses that happen because you're a poor lawyer are one thing. Losses that happen because you fight the fight and you have a corrupt system. You have people that are fighting against you in a dirty way. You have issues in terms of evidence of being allowed to come in and your client is sitting there for most of this time watching it, watching what's really happening. Not what the news is reporting, but what's really happening. Um, those lawyers are people that the president stands with. Uh, he has been one of my biggest supporters, frankly, in my career. And right. I, I am grateful to him and his family for what they've made of, uh, of little old me. You know, I feel like I'm grateful, but I am still very much part of the Trump team. Um, sorry, trolls. I'm still here. <laughs> she is still here. It's Alina Habba. Go and follow her, A-L-I-N-A-H-A-B-B-A. -A -A -B -B -A. Um, I've got to ask you about the gag order. It's my understanding, Alina, and you're way smarter than I am. You tell me this all the time. Um, in law, any rules that are set in the court are to protect the defendant. The, 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 the complete burden is on the prosecution. So when there's a gag order, it should be to protect the defendant, a defendant who's rallying for president, a defendant who wants to speak about these ridiculous char charges. What was the story with the gag order? Why did they get away with gagging you and Trump? So I still have a gag order in place, so I have to be careful. Because, really? As you said, um, many people would love to see me, um, you know, in, in a terrible scenario, which is sick in itself. Uh, I'm just a lawyer doing my job. But... Uh, yeah, there's a gag order against me. It still is against me. Um, you can look it up, but the judge effectively decided that certain things were off the table in terms of putting objections on the record and speaking publicly. I'm not going to speak to those things, but okay. I will say that that in itself was quite disturbing. Um, I believe that attorneys you know, and individuals have an Eighth Amendment right, attorneys have a First Amendment right, non-attorneys have a First Amendment right, all Americans have that right. And when you prevent us from putting things on a record, I think it creates uh, quite a problem for an attorney trying to do their job, but also for the defense. Um, and for the record on appeal, I think it will be, uh, frankly, one of our strong points was that gag. Uh, under what color of law did, did the prosecution, not that she should have had a say, or did the judge wonder what color of law was he able to tell you you can't present the defense you want to i thought that you could if you if you represent me alina you should mm -hmm. you should give the the strongest most vehement defense you possibly can what judge has the right to tell you you're not allowed to well can you not speak you about that either or not no i can i just couldn't decide which case you were asking me about because it applies to so many that i've gone through you know in the past you know four months i've been on trial in new york on one case, it happened, and then right. it happened again on the other, and in the other, I couldn't even bring an expert in. I mean, the judge denied us multiple experts, multiple things that we couldn't bring in, we couldn't talk about, um, you know, Miss Carroll going on, uh, Anderson Cooper saying rape is sexy. I wasn't allowed to tell the jury that she did that. That, to me, is insane. That it's not so insane in the world that I've been living in, which unfortunately is what I speak to the most. Um, I've become more of an advocate for First Amendment rights, and, but also for human beings and individuals that I feel are being silenced inappropriately and unfairly by judges who feel that politics have a place in the robe and on the bench, and they just don't. So yes, we have been prevented from bringing in evidence that helps our cases. Now, of course, there's a normal process where that goes through, where evidence is excluded, included. But then when it becomes obvious that there is a systemic uh, pattern, when it's one sided, when you have people on the other side that were judges, law clerks, when you have, um, you know, people on the other side winking to to individuals in the courtroom, that kind wow. of behavior makes it very clear that we are turning into a banana republic. And when it comes to E.G. and Carol, and, and I know we're mixing the two cases together, and I apologize, but when it comes to that, I saw Sarah Palin posted probably eight tweets by this woman that were just sorted and tawdry. And these were all after this alleged uh, thing happened with Trump. Yeah. There's something different about this lady. And I don't know if you've seen the video of her television show. Holy mackerel. I mean, she's completely off the hook, in my opinion. So you weren't able to present even the tweets? No, I tried to. Uh, many of them were objected to. I actually also had one of the key things of defamation is to say that, you know, he defamed me and therefore I um, have damages. But 
when she came out with her accusation against the president, she didn't have the right year. She couldn't even give us a year or a season. She had no evidence. And then what happened was um, there were tweets that came out because somebody is saying a sitting president did something that is absolutely atrocious. So people were calling her a liar and all these things. Right. And there was a window before the president even issued a statement or acknowledged her that this was happening. They throw me in jail and I said to the judge, I I have to make a record. I have to say that you have to let me put this PowerPoint slide in that right. shows that there was a window before the president even acknowledged her where people were already calling her that. It's not a result of President Trump's denial. He right. has a right to deny an accusation. It's the r result of Twitter. The same thing we've been talking about, trolls. Um, and that's not President Trump's responsibility. He cannot control it. He right. didn't encourage it because he hadn't even acknowledged her yet. So the truth is that was the side that I almost got thrown into jail for. And I said to the judge and I stood up as an advocate, as an attorney, and I said, I have to make my record. And he said, sit down. You're not putting that on the record. And it, it look, the record speaks for itself. People can read the trial testimony. It just, it was one of those low moments in, in my um, career, not for me, but more for, I'm looking at it going, do you really want to keep practicing law when this is the way it's being handled? It was a right. sad, a sad moment for our country. Well, I, I hope that you'll, you'll continue practicing law for the next hundred years because I think you're an amazing attorney. It's Alina Haba. Go follow her, A-L-I-N-A-H-A-B-B-A. -A -A. Go follow her everywhere. Uh, she is President Trump's attorney. When it comes to, let's go back to, to the to the Letitia James case just for a second. I was floating around Zillow the other day. I don't know if you saw this. I posted it on Twitter, but you don't follow me, so you wouldn't know Alina Haba. Um, but, uh, <laughs> I don't go on Twitter. So I, know, I know, I know, I know. It's, it's okay. I'll leave you alone with that. But there's a piece of land, and I, I've been to Mar-a-Lago several times. So I was lucky enough to play the national anthem at the premier police state recently. Um, it's beautiful. It's between the intercoastal and the Atlantic Ocean. I grew up in Palm Beach County. We're always aware of Mar-a-Lago. There's a piece of land, 2.28 acres, that's vacant, very close to, to Trump's estate. And you know what they're asking for it? You know what they, they say the value is of 2.28 acres of vacant land on Palm Beach between the intercoastal and the Atlantic Ocean? 20 million, 25 million, something ridiculous. $150 million. Oh my God. I, I kid you that. not. I, I, I posted it uh, on, on, on the X. So you're looking at Mar-a-Lago and the auditorium where I played the national anthem is worth at least 30 million. Just that building. Forget about the 17 acres of land between the intercoastal and the Atlantic Ocean. Forget about the, the residents and the well, 56 rooms and all this stuff. In, yeah, two acres in Palm Beach is a lot of land. I mean, I should have, if it's it two acres, that's a big piece of property in, in right. Florida. Mar-a-Lago has how many rooms? And, I mean, it's at least a billion, 1.5 billion, if not yes. more. I mean, this market, it's insane. But, 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 you know, but let me ask you this. Why, Lord, it's 18. <laughs> well, why does why does Letitia James, and, me, and, and I don't know what you're gagged about, so if you can't speak about it, let me know. No, but why I does she, speak about my student. Okay, why, why does she have the right to ask anybody how much Mar-a-Lago is worth when it's in Florida and she's in New York. And by the way, there is no aggrieved party. No bank was screwed out of money. They all made interest. They all made a lot of money off of Donald Trump and they continue to make a lot of money off of him. What, what is she basing this case on? Because A, the value of Mar-a-Lago is so ridiculously low. I mean, I, Alina, let's get our money together and buy Mar-a-Lago for 18 million if we can. Because I would like to, I'd like to turn a profit. What gives the willing. attorney general? What gives the attorney general of New York the right to do anything in this case? Um, I'm thinking about how polite I can be. Her campaign <laughs> promise. Her campaign promise was. No, no, she never this. promised that. If you if you listen to her, she never promised anything. She's not evil. She's not bad, and didn't target anybody. Of course, we have the right. video from two years ago. But I mean, yeah. again, I mean, in what world are we living? I don't get it. No, that no, we're we're really not in America right now. So she campaigned on it. She had to fit a round, you know. Uh, she had to literally fit the the narrative. She said, "I'm before she even walked into the Trump Organization papers. Before she was Attorney General, she was just a normal individual saying, i 'I'm going to go into Trump Tower. I'm going to sue them every single day, and I'm going to go home.' Um, so there's a problem. And then she goes into Trump Tower, sees there's nothing wrong. So then what they have to do is use the tax assessed value for Mar-a-Lago of eighteen million dollars and say that because you said Mar-a-Lago for tax assessment in a certain year, which was beyond the statute of limitations, before, because of that, we're now going to sue you. We're going to say that your statement of financial condition 
is so overvalued because Mar-a-Lago is only worth 18 million. Well, that's actually not the case. Statement of financial condition was undervalued. If President Trump wanted to value his statement of financial condition and inflate it, don't you think he'd put his brand, his brand, the same brand that made him president? I mean, yes. it's so nonsensical. You're you're trying to put sense into something that there is no sense. Um, it's not that there were bad lawyers. It's not that there was uh, bad facts. All the facts were true, accurate. There are there is truly political people in the courtroom right now that are making decisions based on an election season, and there's no business for that. And that's really the truth. Mar-a-Lago is clearly not worth $18 million, and it is the biggest, most glaring, obvious political hack that you could ever see, because when everyone, left and right, couldn't defend that, they just couldn't. It's uh, Alina Haba. You're so well said. And by the way, tax assessment, when did that go into collateral consideration? It doesn't. If I have something that I say, hey, Alina, I want to borrow 100 bucks, but and, and I'll, I'll pay it back to you with interest, but I've got this thing that's worth 200 If I don't pay you back, you can have it. And you say, you've got to say, well, I don't think that's worth 200 Or you say, wow, that is worth 200 Sure, let me lend you the 100 bucks. Why is it more, it's not more in-depth and more detailed than that, is it? It's, a, it's not complicated. The bank says, I agree with you. In fact, even if I agree with half of how much you say it's worth, I'll still lend you the money. Isn't it on the Wait, bank by then? The way, they, and they did not, they did not even use the Trump organization's numbers. They, they came they up with their them. own, right? That's it. They came up with their own. They did their own due diligence, their own investigation. And even still, there was still billions of dollars more. Even if you use their lower numbers, there's still billions of dollars more. You can't make up how insane this is. Um, yeah. It's nonsensical through and through. And, you know, it's tough when I do these shows because people want to really understand it. And there's just right. no reason. There's no reason. Well, the thing and is, I'm hoping that the appellate division will see that through the transcripts and the witnesses. She's a certified badass attorney. It is Alina Haba. I asked you where you went to school for your badassery the first time I had you on. I mean, honest to God, I think you're just a great lawyer. Um, and, and I know that you're going to get him the right result in the next step. And I want to ask you what the next step is in a second. But let me ask you something personal that you might not want to get into, and it's up to you. But I see these stupid headlines. Her beauty is in the way. She's beautiful, but not so but not so learned or something. They, they try yeah. to use how you look and the fact that you take right. care of yourself against you. Does that bother you at all? Because you've got major publications saying things that their attempt is to denigrate your education and your knowledge and your intelligence because they're using your looks against you. What, what do you think when you see that? I feel bad for our girls, for mm. women in this country. Um, I had said on a show and they take, you know, they take sound bites and they cut it up. And I had been asked about my looks and if I thought it had anything to do with um being high profile and success and i said well i'm on tv all the time of course it helps i mean how could you say it doesn't help but right. i don't think that one goes without the other i think that it does just because you have one doesn't mean you're not intelligent right. um i think that the world wants to you know half the country wants to hate me and that's fine um, I think it's sad. I, I've never wanted to hate somebody because of politics. I, I don't like when politics make our laws non applicable to certain people and applicable to others. That's where I'm angry. When yes. you walk around screaming, no one is above the law, but everyone's above the law if they're a Democrat and no one's above the law if they're a Republican. There's where I have a problem. But yeah, I think to shame any woman based on her uh, looks, um, positive, negative, is a pathetic, low-level um, attempt to hit me. And uh, if I was insecure, maybe it would bother me more, but I, I truly look at the people that are writing those things and wonder if they have girls of their own and wives of their own. And if they go home and they say, what if somebody did this to my wife or my daughter, how would I feel? I'm unapologetic for who I am. I'm very confident, I think, I'm smart. I think uh, I happen to be decent looking and I have no problem with that. But the fact that they would shame you for that is pathetic. Well, I'll, I'll listen, I'm super proud of you. I, I don't have a right to be proud of you, I don't think. But you know, we're friends now. I've got a wife yeah. and five daughters. 
five daughters who look up to somebody like you and say, hey, I can succeed to the highest level. And no matter what they say about me, if I'm doing the job right and I'm doing it exemplary, which you do, then it's going to all of that's going to be water off your back. But it's got to affect you somehow. I know that the trolls on Twitter don't, don't matter to you, but I posted that thing that I tagged you on and you said facts or something on it. And one of the first comments was she's still not going to date you. Alina, it bothers me that for some reason they think they can objectify you and that somehow nullifies what it is that you bring to the table. Donald Trump is not a dumb guy. I've known this guy for a long time. I've interviewed him 13 times. He invited me to the White House. He's not stupid. And and, right. and you don't get to be who he is in the posi- position he was in even before president if you're stupid. He would never hire you if you were dumb but pretty. It, it, that doesn't make any sense. So as much as... What you just said, I think, will go a long way for my daughters and the, and the women and girls watching. I just want them to put politics aside and put down, put aside who, who you represent and, and look at what you represent to everybody. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I think that's exactly right. I mean, it really, you're the first person to ask me about this, actually, since the comment I made. And people called me and were like, did you really say that? I said, should I be apologizing? I'm not sure why I would. I, I think that I happen to to feel good about myself and feel confident. And if you look at people um, and children in particular right now are very lost in our country and we're seeing um, bullying and suicide rates because of a lack of self-confidence. And yes. I'm not apologizing for being confident and I'm confident on all facets. And of course, I said, I don't go on Twitter because it bothers me, but I'm honest about it. And I choose not to uh, go on more than once in a while to check in because I don't want that negative energy around me, right. to be honest. Um, I'm well aware that people that don't know me like to make fun of me or put me down. I'm well aware of that, but I'm also aware of the fact that they're only speaking to, about me because I'm relevant. Yes. And I think that that's the truth of it. And someone once said that to me when I was, you know, one time really upset about some article, some hit piece. And they said, but Alina, they don't talk about you unless you're making an impact. And yes. Imagine this, Joe, and I'll, I'll I'll say this is the best example for all the girls that are listening that are young. I became a lawyer because I saw this beautiful attorney. She was an entertainment lawyer. She came and spoke at my school, and I said, I want to be just like her. She really was beautiful. She, she dressed beautifully. She spoke well. She was just an impressive person. And I said, wow, just in and out, smart, confident. I want to be like that. And that's why I became a lawyer. Um, I was in the middle of a trial for defamation. And the irony of being in a trial for defamation where somebody is proving their case and saying they're hurt by people on Twitter, these comments on Twitter, somebody saying they want to kill you, um, she's scared, all these things, you're being made fun of in the press, it ruined credibility. I'm sitting there and in that week, I think I received at least three death threats in one day. Wow. Um, I was put on SNL as the opening act where they had the president, fake president, calling me stupid. And I wanted to say, and I'm going to say it now, shame on all of you, because you have no problem defending a woman who is on trial going in, bringing claims against President Trump that, um, you know, she can't even back up with facts. But then we've got the attorney on the other side being truly ridiculed and crucified um, every single day. And I had to just go in and do my job and put up a fight and have a judge, you know, telling me to sit down being, you know, speaking in a disrespectful manner. And I fought that fight and had to be silent because I was, you know, I was on trial and you can't go talk to the press when you're on trial in front of a jury, you you know, ethics rules. But I remember sitting there uh, and, and thinking, you know, I'm lo- looking at her evidence and I'm going, oh my God, I got worse on a Tuesday at 8 a.m., you know, and I'm sitting here on trial. But that's the problem. It's like these people on MSNBC or wherever are talking about me as if I'm not a real person. I've never even been invited to go on MSNBC, frankly. And they just destroy you, but then they get upset when it happens on their side. That's what I'm talking about. It's the dual right. system. It's it's the hypocrisy that we are living in in this country. And it's sad for our children. I think it's why our children are suffering, frankly, to some extent right now. 
Uh, Alina, thank you for addressing that because there are so many young girls and, and women out there who want to achieve so much, yet they're watching on social media that you just have to have this size rear end or your face has to look this way or you have to dance a certain way, and then you're just an object to, to for everybody to, to oogle at or ogle at. And, and for yeah. you... Obviously, you're an attractive person. There are a lot of attractive people, but the, the, the thing that sets you apart is that you're so freaking good at what you do that one of the top people on the planet wants you to represent him. And again, let me say it again, he's not a dumb guy. So you must have done the work. You must have impressed him somehow. The interview process can't be easy for, for the Trump organization or for President Trump. So, so for them to only hone in on what you look like, and make fun of you on Saturday Night Live. They're scared to death of you. I mean, you do get that, right? They're scared of somebody who's smart and young and second, pretty and all that. Second week, second week in a row, I was like, well, they must need their ratings up. Nobody really watches SNL right. that much anymore. Right. <laughs> no, no, and, 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 and if I were right. SNL, honest to God, I would contact you and say, hey, you want to come on and make fun of the other side? I mean, why not balance it out? And actually be real people. But these people cannot let Trump succeed. They cannot let you succeed. And as an arm of him, they've got to take you down. Thank God you said what you said. I'm going to take that piece and, and show it to my kids. And, I, and we'll put it out there everywhere for people to see. Because thank God you have the backbone to stand up. You could have run away. You could have hidden in a hole. You could have said, forget it, Mr. Trump. I can't do this crap. I'm not doing it anymore. And I think that's what they wanted. They wanted to get you off the case, I think. Yeah, you know, my mother said that. It's funny. And we all have moms, right? At the end of yes. the day, we're all human beings. And my mom said, they want you to feel terrible about yourself. And they want to make fun of you. And it's because you're effective. And it's not about, you know, and then I can just see the Twitter now, right? Like, so effective. She got a ruling, but, 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 you know, you weren't in that courtroom. Right. And you weren't there for the last three years fighting the fight and realizing that your evidence isn't going to come in because... There are people with biases um, making decisions that just don't make sense. And we've had some of those decisions reversed. We've gone to the appellate division time and time again. Um, bottom line is this. Everybody in this country on both sides of the coin need to learn how to be a little bit more respectful, need to learn how to be a little bit more kind, and I think need to find God or something bigger than themselves because yes. this behavior of tearing people down in a really nasty way, not in a professional way. And God knows part of my job is to fight and to tear up a case. And that's my job. But um, physical attributes should be off the table. Talking about someone's family, things like those things, they should be off the table. But our country just, you know, we're j and you know, it's going to get worse. We're in a campaign, so it's going to get it worse. Is. But yeah, it, it I, is. I Go, go ahead. I have my armor on. <laughs> Good. And, and and you know what? You wear it well. And, and uh, I, I know that you tried your best to present the best case you could. They disallowed it. They actually did not presume him innocent until proven guilty. They, they like you said, walked in and said he was guilty. So I've taken up a ton of your time, and I appreciate you going to those places that I haven't seen you go elsewhere. So thank you for doing that, Alina. Let me just ask you before I let you go. What happens now? President Trump faces over a half a billion dollars in these fees and fines and punitive damages. Obviously, there's an appellate process. You've got to get out of New York City. You've got to get out of D.C. They've got stacked juries and stacked judges and stacked DAs. What's the next step? You go to the state Supreme Court in New York. I think the appeals court is the top court in New York. What do you do now? Yeah, we have to go to the appellate division next on the attorney general case, of course. Can you get a fair case? I've had good decisions come from the appellate division. Okay. Um, I think that there's a difference between somebody who campaigns and is an elected official, like the attorney generals that we're seeing and the DAs that we're seeing that have campaign promises to fulfill versus people in more permanent roles, tenured judges um, that are really, uh, I think, take their job seriously. And I I'd like to think so. I I've had um, some of the judges on these cases reversed before for decisions that were just wrong on the law and fact, um, in fact, on the Carroll case that happened. So I still have faith in the system. I really do. And I, I, I'm going to you know, work our way up. We always knew these cases were going to be a long run case. Uh, you know, they're for the long haul. Right. And thank God President Trump is so resilient. Thank God he financially can um, withstand the attacks that he has had 
Uh, so, you know, we're, we're going to be appealing, obviously, both of these decisions, and I don't think they'll stand. I think that when people look at what actually happened in the courtroom, not what the press reported was happening in the courtroom, when the judges look at it, they will see a lot of flawed decisions and we'll turn our way. Without getting into the into the weeds too much, and thanks again for so much time, um, because he said guilty on the one count before you even started, can that also be appealed? Can the whole darn thing be appealed, still- including the money? First of all, we went in the appellate division and the judge just completely ignored statute of limitations decisions from the appellate division that were made. He just wow. kept going and, and let evidence in that were outside of that statute of limitations. It was very bizarre. So that right there um, changed the whole course of the trial and went on right. way too long because he didn't even listen to what the first department said. He didn't care. I've never seen that. He said it was uh, admissible for a different rule uh, without getting too legal. Uh, it, it was crazy. So, you know, something as basic as that is grounds for reversal. Um, so we're, we're going to take them all up. It'll be a very hefty appeal and a hefty appellate record. But we're going to, you know, take a look. We've, we've been beefing up and figuring out who the team's going to be to handle the appeal. And obviously, I'll be helping that team. Um, and we'll go from there. Habalaw.com, H-A-B-B-A law.com. Last question. If President Trump were not running for re-election, would any of this have happened? No. <laughs> Period. End no. of story. All right. Good. Uh, interview's over. No, no, no. I mean, <laughs> I, 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 honest to God, I mean, I, I remember asking. He invited me to the White House in 2017. I was one of five talk shows in the country. I felt very, very, very lucky. Awesome. And, and one of the first questions I asked was, did you think your friends would turn on you like this? And he said, oh, you know, I really didn't. He said, I, I consider myself pretty smart, but I did not think that people that I've been in business with for 30 years would be doing what they're doing. And that's way before any of these trials that we're talking about now. These people, some of them who are bringing the charges, probably would have been begging him for money in their campaigns had he not been the president. It blows my yeah. mind that people don't see how completely left versus right this is. Because what happens if you get a DA that's a Republican or a conservative and a judge that's a Republican or conservative and decides, I'm going to take Mark Cuban down? You know what I mean? There's really no difference, is there? There isn't, but that's exactly what I'm saying. No one is above the law. Show me that. Show me. Yeah. Because they keep repeating the same garbage. That's like their their shtick, right? No one is above the law. Show me, because I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing Republican judges do that to the other party. I'm not seeing it. I think there is Trump derangement syndrome that is happening and is permeating our systems. You think? Our, I mean, our legal <laughs> systems. I'm being polite. I'm a lawyer. But, you know, <laughs> it's 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 crazy. So, uh, yeah, it's 100 percent true. If President Trump was not president, a lot of things probably wouldn't have happened. But I can tell you another thing. It just tells you how much he loves this country, that he's willing yeah. to put himself through this again for a third time. And, uh, you know, after the witch hunts had frankly already started and he's still willing to buckle down and fight and, and we're in it to win it. And and it's, uh, you know, we're getting close to November and the more they see his polls rise, the harder they hit. They'll hit me, they'll hit him, they'll hit whoever they can. It's part of the, unfortunately, the culture of politics right now. It's Alina Haba, amazing attorney for Donald Trump. Uh, go to HabaLaw.com. Follow her everywhere. Very good follow over on uh, on Instagram. I love I love the family photos and all the stuff from Mar-a-Lago as well. Alina, thank you so much for giving me so much time. And come back again soon, would you? Thank you, Joe. I'll, I'm going to now go on Twitter for my first time in a week. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate you doing that. Uh, Alina, thank you so much. And we're back after this. Stay right here.